My name's Andrew. I work at Textile, and I'm going to talk to you about a technology that's come up a couple times called the PowerGate. Uh, just a little bit about uh, Textile. So we're a small team uh, of five people. Myself and Aaron are going to present to you um, today, but I wanted to make sure to give a shout out to the other um, the other team members, especially Ignacio, who's really led a lot of the work on the PowerGate um, with us as support. And um, and so just want to make sure that I gave him a shout out, but you can find all our work on, on GitHub as well. So you can see everything there and um, how people are contributing. So um, today's talk, it, so you want to plug Filecoin into your architecture. So maybe you want to drop it into an existing system as an API, or maybe you want uh, to run Filecoin in a stateful way that's smart about your needs. Um, or maybe you want to make your files that you're storing on Filecoin available over IPFS. Perhaps you want to manage multiple addresses with different needs. Um, maybe you want to track your storage deals over time so that you can automatically repair them uh, if they break or you can renew them uh, if the deals are going to expire soon and you still want that data to persist on Filecoin. Um, and so if any of those resonate with you or you're interested in those, you're at the right talk. And, um, and so that's where the power gate really comes in. So the one liner for the power gate um, that I've been using is that it's an API driven solution for de developers to deploy a multi-tiered storage system in their applications and services. And multi-tiered here is really getting at storage and Filecoin and uh, availability on the IPFS network. And like all the things that um, Textile is building, there's kind of two properties worth noting. One actually really related to something very cool uh, Juan talked about earlier with threads. We're really building this stuff for you to use. So it's open source and we really want you to get in there, break it apart, see if it fix, fi fills your needs. Let us know how we can build it differently or collaborate with us to build it differently. Um, so keep that in mind as I'm sharing this with, with you. Um, and then the other thing is that we really focus on trying to make these things feel familiar and simple to use. And so hopefully you'll get that if you start um, working with the PowerGate. It's obviously earlier, so things will be rough if you get in there tomorrow and start um, playing with it, which I, I definitely still encourage, um, but it will get um, more and more smooth as we approach uh, mainnet. Just a few feature highlights of the power gate before we dive into things. Today's talk, we're going to give, uh, Aaron's going to give a, a, a live demo of some of the APIs working in the CLI, and so we'll get pretty technical here. But some feature highlights, the PowerGate is really meant to bridge this uh, Filecoin storage and IPFS availability, but it brings some other really great features that system builders are going to want. Things like being able to create deals, repair deals, renew deals, expire deals. It's stateful and long-term and long -term monitoring of these deals. Um, you can do things like have users that own addresses in the system and they can be sandboxed and have their own storage deals that they're creating that are independent of everybody else in your system. Um, and then it also tracks the network in a long-term way so that it can build up reputations and information about miners so that your deals can be made smartly against the, or intelligently against the network. Um, so for example, I saw the question um, from Ruben, I believe about uh, um, locations and filtering of miners. And so this is a great place where it does it. So the power gate will track um, more than just the location of miners, but also how long they've been on the network and what kind of deals they're making. And so you can actually create deals based on filtering. Um, you can also set up uh, some configurations for how you want your deals to be made, and then just always make them automatically with those configurations. And we'll talk a lot about the configurations here. Um, so PowerGate is really designed to be integrated into your existing systems and to run existing applications and pass on the benefits of Filecoin to your users um, through IPFS and through your own APIs. Um, and so there's a few really interesting things that emerge from um, using the PowerGate that I, that I wanted to point out uh, up front so that you can keep them in your mind. One, it really extends Filecoin and IPFS networks in a way that you can build some really interesting configurations of applications where data is being uh, 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 served over the IPFS network and the power gate remains, uh, ma maintains that data in a persistent long-term way on Filecoin. And I'll share a bit more about this uh, going forward. Um, but you can configure how you want that caching work to work so that you can say, I want data on the network, um, but if it ever uh, drops below what I think is an acceptable threshold of availability on the network, and that's measured in time to retrieve it, you can have the power gate uh, basically re rebuff that 
that data on the network um, so that it, it's there and available again for your users or your application. And this is this is very this is very exciting for sort of this mixed network uh, uh, user. <clears throat> so, with that with that all in mind, um, I, let's get technical. So, the PowerGate uh, is right now built on uh, a few different pieces of technology. It, uh, when, you, when you run the PowerGate, so you're gonna see this little animation here, this is actually just running the Dockerized version of the PowerGate, which will spin up the PowerGate technology as well as a Lotus node, which is a Go implementation of the Filecoin specification, as well as an IPFS node. Uh, in the future, we imagine being able to swap in other Filecoin implementations. Um, right now, we've been focused on Lotus though. And um, this just kind of shows how easy it is to start running and building. Some really cool things that are actually happening here though, Lotus embeds or, or runs a, an embedded um, DevNet. And in this case, it stands up a mock miner so that you can actually um, test, and uh, test and integrate the APIs of the PowerGate without always having to go to the test net or in the future, the main net. You can run a very simplified and fast local version of the network so that you can see how the APIs work. You can test the flow of data and in the future, a lot of this will be um, much more bring your own nodes. And so that, that's really important for people like pinning services that probably are, that definitely already have their own IPFS nodes and their own IPFS networks. And we'll be thinking through ways to um, attach Filecoin to their existing IPFS um, APIs. So let's talk a little bit more about what's happening here. Um, I mentioned that it spins up the Lotus node and the IPFS node. Um, and Juan already made that analogy to the pinning as a term from uh, memory use. So that's great. That's a perfect analogy for how we've been thinking about the multi-tiered storage um, being deployed using the power gate where uh, you use IPFS as your hot storage, your fast layer where data is available to the network broadly. And you use Filecoin for persistence, your cold storage, making sure that data exists. And then you connect it through some automated processes that you can actually control and configure. Um, right now, we have focused on these two layers, but there's a lot of room for these layers to expand as well. And I'll talk a little bit about that as well, layers, layers beyond hot and layers between hot and cold. And so um, keep that in mind as well. And then all of this is actually wrapped up in um, widely supported gRPC API. And the thing that's nice about that uh, API approach is it makes it um, a pretty standard way to attach to this API from different platforms and languages. So you can build your own clients, you can build your own wrappers, your own libraries. Um, and, uh, and we'll show you some of that. And so one, one example of, uh, of an application that's attaching to that API is our, is our, our CLI. And so when you run the binary um, client for the PowerGate, it's really built for the system administrator or the power user or developer um, coming to try to build this stuff and test it out. Um, but that CLI is actually hitting that gRPC API. And it will make this all feel very simple, but don't be fooled, this is pretty, this is pretty, um, powerful and meant to really run inside of a system, not necessarily run inside of a CLI. Um, and so the PowerGate also works for you. So it monitors deals for expiration and it auto renews them is a good example of that. It will auto repair um, your files. So you can actually have storage configurations with replication and then auto repair um, uh, node or uh, uh, one of those replicas uh, if, if things go wrong automatically. Um, you can have one in, one to many sandbox addresses, and we'll talk about that. And um, like I mentioned already, you can kind of track the long-term state of the network and use that to your advantage so you can make smarter deals. So the the surface area of APIs in PowerGate is pretty is pretty broad and expansive, and it, and it actually brings a lot of the APIs that are already available in Lotus and, and passes them through and makes them available to you. Um, but one thing, sort of like the, the area that's going to be of most interest, I think, to people trying to deploy this in systems is an area called the FFS. Uh, the FFS is the, it's short for the Filecoin, uh, uh, Filecoin file system. And, uh, and this is a really important piece of the PowerGate uh, sort of uh, stack. So the Filecoin file system, um, every, each PowerGate can have one to many Filecoin FFSs. And every FFS has an address. It can actually manage multiple addresses. 
Um, and this is where the sandboxing happens. So if say you wanted to run the power gate behind an application that you wanted to give every user an address on Filecoin so that they could manage their own configuration for how storage is happening, they could have their own account balances, you could actually just create them in FFS. And so every FFS is gonna have its own address, it's gonna have its own configurations uh, to manage and it's gonna have, have its own set of deals on, net, on the network. And also um, it's gonna have its own set of data that's available on IPFS. And PowerGate will manage all those different FFS instances um, and keep them alive and keep their data um, available in your APIs. So I mentioned that the FFS has a, a configuration for how it's doing deals, and we're, we're going to talk more about the configuration itself. Um, but the, that's just the default configuration. And if you create, uh, if, you, if you store new data um, in the power gate, you can actually override the default configuration and have a different configuration for every file. So keep that in mind as I sort of show you this going forward, that every storage, uh, every file storage, um, uh, request that you make to the power gate, you can send it your uh, a, a new configuration and actually you can override those configurations. So let's talk about what, a, what I mean by config. I've said this a bunch of times. So um, I already mentioned that we break this up into the hot storage and the cold storage. We can look right here at the config itself and look at what's happening in the config that's controlling what's going to happen in the um, in the two layers of storage. So in this case, this is the default storage config for my FFS. Like I said, I could override this for any new um, file that I want to store with the power gate. But by default, you can see a few things. One, it's saying that I want this data to just be available on the hot network. Um, and then I'm going to actually skip the, ne the next two because they're important, but let me jump right down to the cold storage. So cold storage, these are all the controlling um, configurations for the file coin storage. And so you can see things like replication factor, the default is one, deal duration, it has a default. You can have some blacklist of miners, you can have country codes, um, and you can actually set w whether you want this file to renew um, when the deal is, is expiring. So another really interesting here, thing here for building this into um, applications is you want this data to be available on IPFS potentially. Um, you could actually shut either of these layers off. So you could run, run the power gate and just be exposing IPFS, which is, and then later you could actually turn on Filecoin for all, those, all that data that's actually being pinned to IPFS. But jumping back up to the IPFS setting, these next two are, are very interesting. So um, the IPFS add timeout, this is a really neat configuration um, that looks simple. But what actually happens is it says, if a request comes in for a file that I'm storing, I'm not gonna jump, if I don't have it uh, in my hot layer, I'm not gonna jump to Filecoin to pull it back out. I actually am gonna wait some time to see if I can get it from the network. And in this case, the default is to wait for 30 seconds. And so in that way, you can actually let the network provide you data at this hot, la hot layer before you go back to Filecoin to create a new retrieval deal. And this is where these really interesting network configurations come up. Um, and that's where this uh, allow unfreeze configuration comes in. So allow unfreeze means it's, if you only have it in the cold layer, do you want this FFS to automatically create a retrieval deal, pull it back out of the cold, uh, cold layer and get it into the hot layer? Um, and so that sort of automation and simplicity lets your API just run and you can then um, do a lot of things with your data. So hot and cold um, and, and the config to manage hot and cold is really powerful and it lets you do a, a lot of things, even just at the cold layer, managing your renewal settings, managing your country settings. Um, and the last thing I didn't mention here is uh, in this case, there's only one CID uh, in this FFS. So here you would have a list of all the different files that were being maintained in this FFS. Um, so I already talked about the uh, add timeout, but that's, th this is a really interesting property. And this is a really, this is a really like, um, this is a perfect example of a place that we think is really important and that we wanna build out. And so we'd love your feedback on these things and how you're imagining building it in your system so we can get that just right. But what, what we are imagining is being able to build applications that actually have configurations like this, where IPFS nodes that are outside of the power gate can also be maintaining data. And the power gate just ensures that that data will be persisted in Filecoin and available on the network if any of those other nodes ever go away. And that's, and that's, a really, that's like a really neat um, capability that I think a lot of applications can build around. 
And, um, and I mentioned already that these are just the two layers that are in the configuration already. And this is an area that we'd love your feedback um, as you start looking at this and trying to build with it. Are there other, other layers of configuration that would be helpful to standardize here? So what's hotter than hot? And this would be thinking about um, perhaps you're running a pinning service where you have globally distributed nodes and you wanna be able to smart, intelligently configure how this data gets pushed out to those different nodes. Um, and maybe there's layers in between as well. Um, one other th really interesting thing that we haven't spent much time developing, but I think it's it's available in here and worth exploring, is that in the early days of Filecoin, the PowerGate might actually be able to help serve things like um, locally available data. So by knowing which data is stored in the uh, by the PowerGate, you can take deals to retrieve that data and pass those deals off to um, to nodes in other regions, so they can actually do the retrieval locally to the user requesting the data, get it into local IPFS nodes, but only, only have to run one, one power gate in your system. And that's the sort of configuration that is just, it's just on our mind, um, but we'd love to know how you're imagining deploying this stuff so that we can get that just right. So hopefully that's enough kind of early information to get you really interested to see how this thing works and think about dropping it into your applications. And so with that, I'm going to pass this over to Aaron to give a little demo. All right, so yeah, I'm Aaron. I've been working on PowerGate with Ignacio quite a bit re recently. It's been a really, really fun and exciting project, and I'm excited to show you guys uh, what we've been working on uh, with this demo today. So um, first thing I'm going to do is, like Andrew was talking about, um, all of the kind of getting up and running can be easily done with our Docker images that come in our repo. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up uh, embedded test net. It's just running locally on my computer with one uh, miner uh, so we can run the CLI against it. I'm gonna filter out a bunch of extra Lotus logs and just so we can just see the, the power gate logs that are, are happening, happening here. Um, so that, is started up and then over on the left hand side we'll start using the cli that's just simply called pal um, you can see here from the documentation there's a lot going on um, a lot of the the commands here uh, you, you're free to use them but the main one like andrew was saying is ffs uh, in fact the logic within the ffs command is really using like a lot of the other modules that are exposed here. But to give you an example, like of some of them, like if I say pow net peers, I'll get a list of, of peers on the network. And of course, since we're just running the local dev net, it's just my single miner here. Um, yeah, and there's other commands available to query Filecoin asks and, and current deals and the health of the node and miners on the network. Uh, we build some indexes uh, that are that don't exist necessarily like within the Filecoin uh, blockchain or anything, but we're indexing data and building a reputation index, slashing index, um, and an index of miners where we add metadata like miner location and, and other things. Um, but yeah, so today we're gonna to focus though on the FFS command. So FFS on its own is, there's a lot going on here. Um, but the first thing we need to do uh, in order to start interacting with an FFS is create an instance for ourselves. So to do that, I'm gonna run FFS, uh, I'm sorry, pow FFS create. Okay, and I get a, auth token back from PowerGate. And we need to send that auth token along with every command we run uh, so it can identify us and, and uh, it maps to our instance of, of FFS. I saw a question earlier about whether or not this thing is a JWT. I think today it's not, it's just some generic token, but we're actually in the process right now of uh, adding different authorization levels um, for clients. So there could be like some commands that are only available to like admins and others that are only available to 
uh, other users. So I'm guessing with that change, we'll have to use something like JWTs. So here we go. I'm going to just uh, export an environment variable called pal token and set my auth token there. And that will ensure that the auth token is sent along with every command. Um, okay, so back to the documentation here. Um, just to do a quick example of one of the other commands, let's create a new address um, using the adders subcommand here. So if I say pal FFS adders new, and I give it a name, uh, my address. Okay, so now we've created a new wallet address that is owned by my FFS instance and, and secured with uh, that auth token um, that's associated with my FFS instance. Um, if I say pal FFS info, this will return some general information about the FFS instance and you can see the initial wallet address that existed and then the new one that I just created. And we're funding those wallets by default with some amount of fill there. Um, but, okay, let's get to actually storing, uh, storing data. Um, in this directory I'm in, I just have this little index.html file and we're going to store this thing in Filecoin and then we're going to pull it down uh, from Filecoin onto the IPFS network, uh, just to so see how this all works. So this is the HTML file here locally on my computer. And we'll go back here. And like Andrew was talking about, um, storage in PowerGate is all managed by configurations. So if I want to view the default configuration that all data will be stored with, if I don't provide an override, I can type pal ffs config default. And that's going to print out our default storage configuration, uh, similar to the one Andrew was showing where hot and cold storage are enabled by default with some sensible default settings. Um, let's save this JSON object to a file here so we can modify it. I don't want to just do any default storage. I want to actually do some custom storage here. So first thing I'll do is uh, disable the hot IPFS storage. Um, and we can just look at some of the other things that we could configure here. Um, like in cold storage, replication factor is really interesting. Um, PowerGate will actually take care of uh, storing your data in however many miners you specify here. Uh, the deal duration, um, how long it will last. If there are any miners you definitely don't want to be storing data with, you can specify them in an array here under excluded miners. Uh, same thing, if there are miners you prefer to use, you can specify their IDs here and PowerGate will give those miners preference. Um, country codes, if you know there's geographic areas that you prefer to store your data, you specify them in an array here. Uh, and then renew, um, PowerGate will automatically renew uh, any deals that are close to expiring. And you could specify how close to expiring uh, you want the renew to happen here at the threshold. And then the adder here is the, the, the wallet address I wanna use for the deal. And then repairable is uh, kind of, you know, on the level of hot and cold, but if, if, if uh, it applies to both hot and cold, but if PowerGate detects that the storage configuration is no longer being fulfilled by IPFS and or Filecoin, it will do whatever it can to automatically re repair that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run a couple commands to add the data to PowerGate. And while we're waiting for the, the, the job to execute, I'll explain exa exactly uh, what I just did because it'll take a minute. Uh, so give me a second here.
Okay, so what I just did here, um, first of all, we had to add the data just to the cache kind of on our IPFS node that is running uh, alongside a PowerGate. Uh, the way PowerGate works in order to add data to PowerGate, it has, you just add by C, CID. So that CID doesn't need to be pinned necessarily, but it just has to be available somewhere on the IPFS network. So just to ensure that was true, I used this little helper command we have called add to hot and I, and I provide the path to the file and get the CID back. Um, next thing I did was actually pushed the new storage configuration for the CID that exists on the IPFS network. Um, I've provided this watch flag and watch uh, tells the CLI to do this thing here where it kind of blocks and shows the job status, um, which just succeeded now, so we know it's done. Um, since we didn't want to use the default storage configuration, I provide this dash C flag with the path to our file um, that holds that custom config we want to use. You could also pipe uh, the JSON into this command of st standard in if you wanted to. That also works. And then, of course, the CID of our data. And so we, we pushed it, and then we were watching the job status, and we saw it progress. I don't know, you could have seen some information in the log here on the right as well, but now it's uh, successfully stored. So let's run another command, pal ffs show, and then provide the CID, and that's going to give us uh, the current storage state for that CID. Um, there's a job ID that executed it, our data CID, uh, the timestamp that this happened, um, our hot storage information, which I can tell you, this is a little misleading, but I can tell you this is actually kind of like the disabled state. There is no hot storage happening. Um, this timestamp is just some default empty timestamp. Um, so that's consistent with our config, our cold config here for Filecoin. Um, you actually see our list of proposals. So these are the actual stores deals that were executed on our testnet with our miner here. The, the, the epoch in which the deal became active, our deal duration. Um, yeah, so you can see the state of our deal now. Um, I'm gonna show you another cool command over here. I need to uh, export my token again. Okay, so pow ffs log and CID, ah, that's the wrong one. Give me a second. That one. There we go. Okay, so the log command um, will basically watch a stream of log events that we, the API provides where basically any change to the CID, there will be some log output um, that we can see updates to here. Um, so back, so keep an eye out over here for when we make a change over on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and edit our configuration file. And since we were previously just storing data uh, in Filecoin, uh, now let's make that data available for sure now on the IPFS network. Um, so I enable the hot storage. I'm gonna set allow unfreeze to true. Um, just to explain this once more, I know Andrew hinted at it, or he, he, he didn't hint at it, he explained it well, but it's really, really cool. So what we're saying here is um, I want to make this data available, the CID available on IPFS. Um, I'm willing to run a retrieval deal to get it from Filecoin if I have to, but let's see if we can get it from the IPFS network for free and we'll wait 30 seconds uh, trying to do that. And only if we can't, will we run a retrieval deal from Filecoin and pay the fill that we need to pay in order to get it on the IPFS network. And we'll leave our cold configuration the same. Um, now I'm gonna run uh, that same push command again, but this time I just need to specify override flag, uh, just because by default, PowerGate won't let you override 
write like an existing storage configuration without explicitly saying you know that's what you're doing and you want to do it. So we provide the over, override flag there. Okay, so that happened quite quickly, um, probably because PowerGate was able to find that CID cache still like uh, on, on our local IPFS node or on the network or whatever. And you can see some log output over here on the right hand side. Um, now let's run pow FFS show and our CID again. And now we see the updated storage information for that CID uh, has changed. We now have a real hot storage configuration here, enabled true so the file size and a valid created timestamp. And nothing changed about our cold storage. But um, if we were running on a on the test net or on the main net with many miners, we could we could have added more um, replication factor or country codes or whatever to our cold storage and that would be reflected here. Uh, let's see. Okay, and we can, we can go over here now. And this is the IPFS gateway running locally on my computer here. We can see that data is available. And then this is the public uh, IPFS gateway out on the internet and there it is. So that, that's, I think, mainly what I wanted to show you with the CLI. Um, and I hope you can see there's a lot of potential there. Um, one thing to remember, Andrew mentioned it early, is that, earlier is that the CLI is just built on our Go uh, client library that's just part of uh, the PowerGate repo. And that client library is just built on gRPC definitions um, that are in the repo. So there's a lot of flexibility in the stack. Um, you know, you, anybody could build a new client in any language that supports gRPC. And anyone wanting to build or integrate PowerGate into a Go application can use the existing Go client. Same one that the CLI is built on. So just for a little inspiration here, um, This is a project that you've probably seen some screenshots of already, but we're working with Protocol Labs on using PowerGate as the API to drive this awesome uh, Filecoin web UI front end. Um, I'll leave most of the details to Pooja for her lightning talk later when she presents more on this. Um, but just real quick, you can see how some of these concepts map really nicely to PowerGate. Like, the idea of a user profile maps cleanly to an FFS instance. And within a single FFS instance, you have um, your wallet addresses uh, that are managed by that single instance. You have the files in there, their storage status that are managed by a single FFS instance, um, information about file coin deals and so on. So we're really excited to see where that project goes, uh, it's, it's been great to work on. And that's all I've got, so back cool. to Andrew. Thanks, Aaron. I think we're almost out of time, but let me just, um, I guess, just wrap this up very quickly. Um, so Aaron showed you a lot of things and showing it over a CLI, you had to move through it sort of slowly. So I hope you got it all, but just to kind of recap, because I'm so excited about how much is packed into this pretty little thing, it seems. Um, but Filecoin storage, deal management, per user configurations for all your users, PowerGate's got it. IPFS and Filecoin interoperability, PowerGate's got it. Dockerized and API driven, I hope you're seeing the trend. Widely supported and typed APIs. I, I wish there was like feedback from this audience. Per user, per file control, storage caching of lifetime deal availability. Yeah, okay, so long-term management of unfreeze, repair, and renew, pow, pow, pow. Okay, cool. Um, and a beautiful open source UI that people are building on top of it already. Um, yeah, you've got it. So um, I, want, I would leave you with that, but I just want to mention one last thing because um, when we've been building the PowerGate, we've been getting really excited about what kind of implementations could be on top of it. And we're really building it so that you can pick it up and adopt it. And one of the ways that we're testing that is trying to run it in, in, in an infrastructure like textiles and particularly focusing on if we can make 
um, systems like the buckets protocol and the threads DB protocol actually run on a power gate. And so we'll have a lot more information about that soon. Um, but that's, that's kind of the exciting direction that we're going is letting users actually have their own data sets in a thread, for example, and put their own storage configurations right in that thread. And then the power gate can execute it for them. And this is where pinning services could come in and be doing some really epic things on top of that. Um, so hopefully you'll pick it up and try it out and um, you'll be in really good company. There's already people that are kicking the tires and checking out that code. Um, like I said, it's early. So um, just work with us and, and get in there and give us pull requests and try this stuff out. And, 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 and like I said, a, a few times, we would just love to know your use cases and figure out what things we need to be building for exactly so that you can run this thing and um, join Filecoin with your pinning service, with your application, with whatever you want to run. Um, and so then I'll leave you, I'll leave you with that. And I will, um, I'll share these slides uh, as well, of course, but thank you very much.